thing that we do that's a little bit special is, is that the relationships that we have with our centers provide the opportunity for us to, um, to provide feedback in the way of auditing some of these calls. And um, with the consent both of the patient and of the, of the um, treatment center themselves and the person on the phone, um, we actually are able to kind of track through some of the actual admissions calls. And what we're finding is um, some just really basic high-level things don't happen often enough when a phone call is, um, is answered on behalf of the treatment center. Um, so often the, the call goes unanswered. It's actually about 8% of the time the, the person seeking treatment gets some sort of voicemail. They get some sort of dead air or they, it goes for minutes on end without somebody answering the call. Um, this is an availability thing. This is somebody who, um, if they're calling in from one of our ads, ultimately they're seeing us either online, on a TV commercial, um, on a billboard. This is somebody that is reaching out and, and oftentimes is in a place um, of hopelessness. And the idea of, of somebody just answering the other end of the phone oftentimes is, is that first step for them um, to, to kind of regain or, or structure some sort of hope. And um, we see it too often that people don't actually even get to talk to somebody. So that's, that's a first level thing. Um, the second level thing, and, and I think it touches a lot of, um, of the undertone of, of kind of the industry today, but, but I think it's something that, that we miss because we become numb to the idea that these are people, these are moms and dads and sisters and brothers and um, family members, is that we just, before we ask for information like your first name, we're asking for information about insurance. We see that over and over and over again on these calls where, you know, hi, in order to get you to the right person, can I have the name of your insurance provider? Um, and we've actually tracked the outcomes on, on how some of this stuff works. And, and lo and behold, you actually get more verifications of benefits, more admissions ultimately. Um, when you, when you kind of skip that and you treat people like people first, you go, you go through that process. Um, you end up getting some really interesting things to happen. We're, we're able to find money that didn't exist. We're able to call a loved one. We're able to, to seek um, additional assistance to get, um, to get the resources necessary to come to treatment. So the, the high level two things I would, you, you'll hear over and over from me this morning is the humanity side of, of the admission process. It's that these people, um, it becomes you know, one of 50 calls that I get today as an admissions rep. And, and so it becomes numb to me. But these are people that, that are in a time of need, and these are our people, and these are, these are people in a time that um, this isn't something they do every day. This is something that may have been built up over a long time. So um, from the admissions perspective, on the front end, it's just it's treating people like people, answering the phone. Um, and then and truly the follow-up side of it. Um, we mystery shop all the time. Um, this is something that I've found is, is I mean, it would blow your, blow your mind the number of times that we've talked to centers, we've had complete conversations, and they said, hey, look, we're going to follow up with you in an hour, and you never hear back. Or we're going to follow up with you in two hours, or we're going to follow up with you this afternoon, and then you never hear back. Um, the follow-up side of it, it's, it's just basic. It's, it's, it sounds very basic in, in, in principle, but in practice, it doesn't happen enough. So those three things, I think, are a, kind of a good basis as to um, just high-level things that can be worked on internally within you know most of our of our programs